Welcome back again to another Tech Guru video. Today we are in Microsoft Excel for Mac. Uh, I'm going to be giving you a basic rundown of the program. It's very, very similar to Microsoft Excel for Windows. So if you are on a Windows machine, this tutorial will be helpful as well. But this is the Mac version. So I'll be running through all of the uh, basic tasks and basic objects you can do within Excel. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's say that you have a business that you are starting and it is a business that sells clothing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say total sales for let's say first quarter. Okay. So what we can do now is we can actually center this text within a number of uh, columns. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight uh, A, B, C, and D. Okay, the columns A, B, C, and D. Once I get done doing that, I then go over here to my formatting palette. And if this is not available to you, you can go up to View and then make sure there is a check by the formatting palette option. Once you have done that, you will see an option under alignment and spacing that says merge cells. Click on the merge cells. Now, once it's done, you can either align that to the left, align that to the center, and then you can even go up here and bold your text and underline your text. So now that we've done that, we have our title, and that's how you manipulate text within different columns. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to skip row number two, and I'm going to type in January. Now, what you can do within Excel, instead of typing out February and March, what I'm going to do is move my cursor over the bottom right-hand corner of that specific box there. I'm going to click, and I'm going to hold, and it's going to go ahead and automatically put in February and March. So that would be the same if let's say we typed in a 1 here and then we went ahead and grabbed the bottom right hand corner of that box. If we continue to go over it will automatically fill down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 if you have that autofill feature on. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of that. So now that we have our January and February and March up here, we can go back and we can highlight the text here and we can center it within the specific box that it is in and then we can bold and italicize that just for a little emphasis. Once we do that what we're going to do next is we're actually going to add a row. So what I've done specifically for this video is I have accidentally put my three months over a little too far to the left so I want to insert a row. I mean, I'm sorry, I want to insert a column. In order to do that, what we're going to need to do is select column A, which is right here, and then click on Insert. Up here you will see Rows. You can also insert specific cells or columns. So I'm going to insert a new column. Once I do that, it then inserts a new column to the left of the column I had selected. Now, now that we've done that, we can go and we can start typing in our items that we have sold. So the first item is going to be t-shirts, the next is going to be pants, and the next one is going to be hoodies. Okay, so we have three different objects here or items that we have sold in our store. Now, I am actually going to go ahead and write out how many of those items we have sold. So we have sold 220 of those in January, 110 in February, in March we were crazy and we sold 350. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same for pants and hoodies. So I'm going to go ahead and type in a few numbers here for the different objects that we're selling. Once I have all of these numbers inserted here, and this would be the same if you're doing this for uh, whatever it may be. I'm just showing you an example of how to use the cells and the table within Excel. So we sold 205 there, and then in March we sold 300. Now, what is so great about Excel is that it will do all of my formulas for me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of these boxes which is right here all of these cells is they're called cells and then I'm going to click on auto sum auto sum is right here in the top menu bar of Microsoft Excel uh, it's like a backwards or weird looking E or a sideways M however you want to call it and that goes ahead and it went ahead and added these up for January now if I go over here and I highlight the bottom right hand corner of that 
sell, click and hold, it will actually do the same for February and March. So as you see there, if I click and hold on the bottom right hand corner of that cell, it will actually do the same formula for both February and March. Now, let's say we wanted to total up how many t-shirts and pants and hoodies we sold all together, as well as our total down here, grand total for how many items we've sold all together. What I will do is now is I will add a new title to my column up here which is column E and you can see what column you're working on by which one is highlighted here and I will actually it will actually keep the same formatting as the other ones on the same row so once I do that I will go and I will select all of the t-shirts that I've sold and I will click on auto sum once again so now I can do the same thing I did with the totals over here is I can click and hold the bottom right hand corner and drag it all the way down and it will add up my totals for all of this stuff that I have done within January, February and March. Now let's say I want to take this last row here and I want to make it a different color so it'll stand out because it is my you know my grand totals for all of the stuff that I'm doing within your formatting palette there is an option here that says borders and shading I can actually go over here under the color option which is a fill color and I can click that and I can make that a nice yellow color so now all of my totals are actually in a yellow row so it stands out and I know exactly what that is now within Microsoft Excel you can do all types of formulas it is not just addition or subtraction you can actually divide you can multiply and this helps if you're a business owner or if you're just an individual who's trying to set a budget for their personal life so I can actually go here and I can type in a few numbers so let's say I'm typing in a few numbers here and I want to go and select this number these two numbers okay and the cell below I want to subtract the bottom number from the top so what I will do is I'll click on the down arrow on the I'm sorry let me undo that there I will click on the down arrow and I will actually go here under more functions you can actually see the different functions that you can do you can actually have the sum the average the min the max uh, you can actually do add subtract multiply or divide you can do all kinds of stuff and it gets into all kinds of different things that you can do so let's say I want the average of those two numbers I'll click on the average there and then press enter and it'll average out what I have done here so I'm gonna go ahead and undo that now okay I'm gonna close out of what I have done there and I'm actually going to delete these two cells here now what I want to do is I want to show you guys one more thing within the formatting palette. So let me go ahead up here and show you the formatting palette. Once we are in our formatting palette, we can actually take all of these numbers and highlight them just like this. And I can go over here where it says under the number option and where it says format, I can actually click on the down arrow and I can make these currency. So click on currency and now that shows me it's in dollar format where it says two hundred and twenty dollars and obviously that is not what we want to do because that's not what we've done we've actually totaled up items and not currency so I'm gonna go back to general there but you can also do a number of things you can make these into percentages you can make these into accounting numbers you can make these into dates and times and percentages whatever you want to do but I'm gonna keep that in general right there now let's say that I have a row over here a column which is column F and I have actually left it out of my title here so what I want to do is I actually want to select all of these columns in the top row here and I want to merge them again because I've left one out here so I will click on the merge one more time right here under the formatting palette and I'll make sure that it's centered by aligning it right here now once I do that you see here it looks very nice and that's exactly what I want so now the last thing that I'm going to show you is how to add your borders to all of your cells so what we want to do is we want to select our whole project by highlighting everything that we have done and we actually want to go under the borders and shading option here and click on the type which is right here you can only select to do the outside which doesn't give you the inner lines here within your cells or do all of the the lines within all of the cells so I'm gonna click on that now that gives me my border for my table within my whole project and again you can select all of this and you can choose whether you want it to be double lined if you want it to be single lined if you just want the middle lines to be shown you can do all sorts of things within 
you know this option now you can actually change the color of this you can change the shading and that's all done within the borders and shading option here in your formatting palette so guys this has been a basic and brief rundown for beginners on how to use Microsoft Excel for the Mac again this will work the same if you're on a Windows machine as well if you have any questions put them in the comment box below and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have I am very experienced in Excel and know all of the different formulas and options that you can do so if you do do have any questions feel free to put those in the comment box below if this video helped you out go ahead and click on the thumbs up button below and like this video that will help me out don't forget to subscribe for more great tech tutorials like this and as always thank you so much for watching my videos and I will see you guys next time <music>